was the son of a pizza man, the only boy who could have... So here we are, day number two, and I just took this guy out of the fridge. Um, it doesn't look like it uh, rose really that much. It may have expanded a little bit, but I was expecting a little more, I'm not sure why, but anyway, we're just gonna go with it. So the next step is to pan and dimple the dough. So it's essentially just putting it onto the pan and then kind of stretching it out slowly over an hour. And then after that, we're gonna let it sit for four hours and then we can actually make it. So um, yeah, so let me just get into it. So I have my pan here and I'm going to, I'm gonna take my ring off first. <laughs> I learned that from the hard way from yesterday. I can get it off. Okay, so I'm gonna oil my pan. Uh, they say like a tablespoon and a half, but I'm just gonna eyeball it. So I'm just going to oil it with my fingers. I just bought this pan, so it's a, it's a blue steel pan. Um, and I did the whole put it in the oven for 30 minutes to cook off the whatever is on it before you may <laughs> use it. Very strange. Okay. So I'm going to get the dough. It's definitely firmer than it was yesterday, but it's also cold, so. All right. Oh, shoot. I think this makes two, two, two pizzas. So I'm going to divide this into two. I don't want to make all of this. Okay. Again, I pr should probably be measuring, but I am not because we're just spitballing here, kind of. Okay. So let's. Um, so the dimpling is kind of just pressing your fingers into the dough. And I kind of do this anyway with the New York style pizza where you're just kind of pressing into it to flatten it out. But, so the dough is really cold now, so it's, it's there's, there's uh, resistance to, um, there's resistance to uh, stretch. It's gonna spring back. So I think that's why you do this over time. So you don't like force it. Um, I guess you just do it until there's no, um, I didn't see anything where it said like how long to do this or, um, whatever. So I'm just going to assume that's okay for the first pass. So I'm going to do this three more times, uh, over the course of an hour. I'm going to wait 20 minutes after this. Do it again, wait 20 minutes until an hour is up. Then hopefully by the end of the last panning and dimpling, the, the dough will spread out over the entire pan and uh, we'll have our, our pizza. So uh, I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and I will see you 20 minutes. It's actually not gonna even be a little big enough. I think it just needs to cover the the dough. It's like it's it's also loose, so that should be fine, I think. Okay, so we are on the last stage, stage four of dimpling and panning. So I'm going to unwrap this beauty and I'm going to get the 
dough to the edge, hopefully. It's not going completely to the corners, but it's fine. I'm, I will be okay with that for my first try. I'm gonna accept it. No corners for me. No sharp, sharp corners. So anyway, uh, okay, so now that the dough has been pan and dimpled, <clears throat> so we're going to put half of the cheese, uh, we're gonna press, press it into the dough. Um, and this is a method that Peter uses specifically. Uh, I don't think it's a standard practice for this type of pizza, but it's something that he does and he really swears by it, so we're gonna do that. Also, I wasn't able to get brick cheese, <clears throat> like I mentioned before, but I was able to get um, a standard mozzarella, a brick, one pound brick of mozzarella. I, I had some <laughs> leftover cheddar cheddar slices, like deli slices. Um, also, like three of them, so I just sliced them up, so it's gonna be kind of a mishmash of flavors, but cheddar and mozzarella are a good substitute for brick cheese, allegedly, so I'm gonna press half of this into the dough. This does seem like a lot of cheese for, for this because this is only half of the cheese. And I guess uh, right before it goes in the oven, we, we put the other half on top. So it's a very cheesy pizza. It was also suggested to get the cheese to the corners, uh, if you could, to kind of get that. The whole thing with Detroit style pizza is the caramelized crust. So, the more cheese you have like towards the ends, the better. The cheese has been pressed into the dough, oh so gently, and now we have to cover it up with saran wrap and just let it sit for four hours, which is kind of a long time, but uh, we need to let it kind of rise and do its thing, and then we'll be back for the last step. So I've had this guy sitting for about four hours now, and let's take a look at it. So it's definitely risen a little bit, and it looks a little fluffy. So um, the next step I'm supposed to do is add more cheese, the rest of the cheese. Um, I'm not sure that I'm actually gonna add all of the cheese because that's a lot of cheese. <laughs> and I want, to, I want to make sure that this all melts and um, cooks in time. So I'm gonna add maybe like, maybe half of it, half of the rest of the cheese. Um, so let me do that right now. So I put the rest of the cheese on it. The next thing I'm gonna do is stick it in the oven. I've had it preheating for uh, about 20 minutes at 500. So uh, it's gonna go in, it's gonna bake for about eight minutes, and then I'm going to rotate it and then cook it for another six to seven minutes and then it should be done. So get this guy in the oven and hopefully it'll turn out. So look who I scrounged up. Hi. So uh, the pizza just came out of the oven. It took- Scrounged up. Scrounged up. How dare you. It's like scraped up, like I'm gonna bomb your bum like a shoe. You know, wow. like that gum. Yep. That you put back in your mouth. Happy 2020, everyone. So, uh, yeah, so the pizza came out, it was in the oven for about 16 minutes in total, and it looks and smells delicious. Yeah. So the final step that you need to do is take some pizza sauce and give it some stripes. So, because this is the classic stripe pizza. Okay. Um, this is homemade sauce, I just made it. It's delicious. Is I'll put, it, is I'll it put the warm? recipe in the uh, description. It is not warm, it's okay. room temperature. Okay which is how they instruct you to do it. Okay. So we're gonna make some stripies. Or, it's, or not the whole, it's not the whole thing? Nope. Sure isn't. We've had a Detroit style pizza and I don't remember yeah. it having stripes on it. Um, no. Was there, think, were there stripes? Yeah, there were definitely stripes. They probably should have done three stripes, but. Yeah. Now, are you supposed to go down the longer end of it? Is that kind of the way that I mean, I think that's that's the traditional as opposed way to, to do like, it. As opposed to do it. 
I mean, you can do whatever you want, but you know, this is, I'm trying to, I was trying to follow the instructions kind of pretty closely. Mm -hmm. So, so there, my friends, is a Detroit style uh, pan pizza. Oh boy. So the next step uh, is to get it out of the pan. Okay. Also, before I do that, I want to mention that, I don't know if you can see it, but this crispy stuff, the crispy cheese along the sides is called Frico. Excuse me? It's called Frico, officially. How do you spell it? F-R-I-C-O. F-R-I-C-O. Yep. So oh. Like Rico, but with an F. Right. Okay, not F-R-E-E-K-O. Not, not. Frico. Like get Frico. <laughs> yeah. So. F-R-E-A-K-O. Yeah. Hi, I'm DJ Rico. Oh my God, Frico Suave? Yeah. That's a sick, uh, I guess that's also like, like an EDM. <laughs> do you have to release it and then do, and then cut it into chunks? I mean, you, there's no way to cut it unless you, you're cool. not supposed to cut in the pan. Oh, you're not supposed to cut no. in the pan. I no. see. Okay. So I'm not sure. Here, let me, let me get a, um, a spatula. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like on there. Let me try the other side. Oh no! Oh. Yeah, it's in there. Yeah, yeah, it's definitely on there. It's like stuck in there. Well, I don't know if there's like a trick to making it not stick. That's that's for that's for round two, I guess. Yeah. Figuring that out, but I just wanted to get something so we could taste it. Get this section out. Am I crazy or is it very thin? It is very thin. Do you think that's part of it? Might maybe. Okay. So I gotta, gotta chunk out and totally scrape up the pan, but it's fine. It's okay, it's gonna get It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay. It's fine. Does it burn on the bottom? You're burn on the bottom. Let's take a look. I, either I did something weird with the dough or uh, the pan is just too big and it, it was too thin. So, because mm. I didn't use the entire dough that I made, but it's supposed to be for two, for two pizzas, but I think it's two nine by nines, and this is like a 11 by 15. Yeah. So I'm thinking maybe next time, either use a small smaller pan with the same, yes. with this amount of dough, or use uh, the entire dough. Can we with taste the dough? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I know you're hungry. Yeah. Okay. It's not bad, but it is just sort of oh. almost like a, like a, like a focaccia. Um, kind of, I don't know. It's, it's definitely got like, you know, the bottom is really crispy, brown. I mean, it, it's definitely pizza. It doesn't taste, I mean, I think it, this is like a flatbread. I think the biggest takeaway is to use the right pan mm -hmm. and the right amount of dough. Otherwise, I mean, the, the flavor's there. Mm -hmm. um, and there's, there was supposed to be more cheese on this. Wow. According to the recipe, but I only used like one and a half. But again, so, it's less dough. Yeah. So, who knows? So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think this is a good first attempt. Yeah, it tastes great. It's yeah. not bad at all. Um, I don't... I don't love the whole sauce on top thing. It's like not my fave, especially the fact that it's like not like all the way across the top, it's just like in these lines. Right. Um, but that's just me. Um, I don't know, it's kind of cool. But it is sort of like, like I'm saying, it's like almost like a cheese bread, like a flatbread that right. has well, like an Italian sauce on it. I mean, that's kind of what Detroit style pizza is. It's, it's like mostly cheese and then like sauce um, as a finisher. But you can also put like pepperoni or any kind of toppings you want on this. Yep. So overall, I think this was a good first attempt on my part, and I'm excited to 
try again and make it even better. Mm -hmm. And if you have tried making Detroit style pizza, please let me know. Uh, I'd love to hear your experiences. And yeah, so also if you haven't subscribed already, please remember to do that. And um, until next time. Yeah, smell you later. Ciao for now. Hey Google, tell me a pizza joke. What is a pizza's favorite movie? Hi Heart. Awful. Awful. Also, what is that sound? Hey Google, tell me a pizza joke. What is a pizza's favorite movie? Hi Heart. You just said that. <clears throat> hey Google. Tell me a pizza joke. What is a pizza's favorite movie? Hi Heart. Is that the only joke you know? I know it's not. One more time. Hey Google, tell me a pizza joke. Waiter, will my pizza be long? No miss, it'll be round. Get it? Get it? Uh, uh, uh.